Okay, so uh, we will try to analyze the concept okay, of democracy that we discussed the first day, um, but now focus on two ancient civilizations, okay? the ancient Greece and the ancient Rome. So we will compare these two first democratic systems in history. Okay? That is not a mistake. We can, we can find some proto-democratic expressions in Mesopotamia, for example. Uh, and some expressions, so proto-democratic processes in ancient civilizations like Egypt, India, or China. But when we talk about democracy as a system, we have to talk about the ancient Greece and the ancient Rome as the origin of this. Okay. We have here the first ideas. I have more. Okay, and you will help me with more ideas. But the first thing that we can say is that both have in common something, okay? And this is, I hope, will be obvious. If this is not obvious for you, then it will start being obvious, okay? Is that democracy means citizenship, citizenship means democracy, okay? If you have a system that is non-democratic, a non-democratic system, basically you have I don't know, people, inhabitants, humans, but not citizens, okay? The concept citizens means that these humans are able to participate in a democratic process. That is why both are connected. So they establish the idea of citizenship, okay? It was born in the ancient Greece, but the Romans adapted it. Okay? and adopted it too. And these citizens basically exercised the power. Okay? They took the decisions. Uh, that is basically what citizenship means. Okay? Remember that we say, or how we define democracy. People have the power. Okay? But here we have a problem, and this is maybe uh, part of the information that you can use for your selfie video is that citizens were only men, okay? Women, slaves, or foreigners, okay, were not included in this category, okay? So only men, okay? And we will see, because we start with the differences, that talking about men, we have differences between Greece and Rome, okay? But what do they have in common, additionally? Something that I didn't write? Something new? Something that you have in your notes? Um, yes, what? Um, both of them believe that laws should be based on principles of reason and justice and should protect citizens and their property. Okay, here, laws. Okay, the law is based on justice, property, what else, sorry? And, okay, and reason, yes. That sounds a little bit modern, okay? And that is why we start modern world history with the ancient Greece and the ancient Rome. Because with some mistakes, terrible mistakes like this, anyway, we consider that they impose, okay, a very rational development of a civilization, okay? Based on justice, based on private property that is very common in the capital, very common now, it's one of the essentials of the capitalist system, etc. Okay? What else? Something that they have in common? Something additional that they have in common? I can, I can continue with this in another moment. But okay, the first thing that they have different is the time, okay, of these democracies. In the ancient Greece, the democracy only remained during one century, okay? One century, more or less. That is why I use this symbol, okay? More or less one century, okay? The fifth century before Christ, okay? Rome, uh, we can say that used democracy as a system during five times the Greek democracy, 
five centuries, more or less. Okay, from 509 common era to 27 common era. Okay, so this is before Christ. This is after Christ. Good. Clear. Okay. What else? What do they have? Or what another element is different? difference of these two civilizations, okay? The first one is that this is a direct democracy. It is a non-direct democracy. Yes, you are right. This is basically the first thing that we have here, okay? If you watch the video that I posted, you will find that all citizens of Greece were in a coliseum or something similar, okay? Uh, trying to participate. So that was crazy. Okay, a lot of people saying things, giving the opinion, etc., etc. So it was very difficult. They tried to organize it, but anyway, because they created an executive branch that was formed by a big group of men, okay, like 200, say 100, let me see, 500 men, okay. Uh, but anyway, you have a lot of men expressing their opinions, okay? So, was critical. Yes, you are right. The first element is that Greece had a direct democracy, but here, because of the figure, the idea, okay? The category of representatives, okay? They have, or they had a non-direct democracy. Good, perfect, clear? Okay. Talking about men, talking about men, the ones that could be citizens. What is the difference between men's he men here and men here? They were the same? At the end, they tried to be the same, but anyway. Here, if you are a man, okay, if you are a man, sorry, you are a citizen, so all men here. But in Rome, at the very beginning of the democracy, we have five centuries, so we have transformations of this system, but here we have something particular, okay? Only wealthy men. At the very beginning, wealthy men. That changes at the end, okay, but only what they called the patricians, okay? The patricians could participate, okay? In fact, there was, I will say a revolt, maybe a revolution, revolution is a big concept, I would say a revolt, of plebeians, okay? That was the other uh, social class against this particular decision that only rich people could participate, okay? Rome was divided into big social classes, okay? The um, patricians and plebeians, okay? The first one were wealthy people, okay? Then were included in the political decisions in a democratic way, okay? Democratic, because only rich people could participate. Plebeians, we could say the rest of the people, okay? They were not included. Okay, and the difference was huge, okay? In terms of numbers, plebeians and patricians, they were like one per hundred, okay? One patrician, one hundred plebeians. So of course you can imagine the difference. That is why when these people started revolting against this system, patricians had to accept because they discover if they realize they are a lot, maybe they can destroy our, our system, okay? Anyway, anyway, when plebeians were included, that didn't 
mean that the plebeians could get very important positions in the state, okay? The important positions in the state, in the Roman state, in the Ro Roman Republic, um, were only for patricians, okay? So still being not that uh, fair at the end. That is why we continue saying this, okay? That they have this difference. What else? Okay, tell me more, more things. For the similarities, I noticed that both uh, Rome and Greece, uh, ancient Greece, divided their gods very much into branches. Okay, yes, that is true. Okay, they have three branches expressed different, but they had the first division of power. Okay, yes, that is true. They have the first division of power. Uh, let me continue here with these lines. You say that the law, based on justice, property, and reason, okay, on principles of reason, uh, were essential here. But now, how were the laws created? This is a difference. Here is a very important difference. If we say that the law is very important in a democracy, and in fact we say that is the most important thing, okay? What is the method, okay? The procedure to create a law? Writing by writing. In by the writing Roman? In Rome. Okay, because yes. I think the plebeians wanted to make sure that they would be able to participate in, uh, in democracy, so they wanted the government to write laws. Um, yes, yes, but if you follow this principle of direct and non-direct democracies, basically what we have here is that here the citizens participated, okay, uh, because they propose and vote the laws. citizens participated in this way. They proposed and they voted the laws all together. Okay? That is why I, told, uh, I said that that was for sure a mess. Okay? Everyone screaming, uh, impulsing his idea, etc. That was crazy. Here we have a very... In so basically we have here the legislative. Okay? This is the, legi the, the, legi the, the legi legislative branch, okay? Here we have the Senate, okay? This concept is important here, okay? We have representatives, okay? And they take the decisions. That was your point, no? You were trying to say that they had representatives. Yes, that's right. Effectively, they transform this messy process in a in a more organized process, okay? Um, but in this case, we will say that the Senate was formed by, at the beginning, only patricians that took decisions about economy and military, okay? At the end of the democracy, uh, of the republic, I mean, when this centuries, when this time, calculate this time, no? When this time was finishing, they included as senators to some plebeians, okay? But still being different, okay? The difference is still being there, okay? The social classes still being important for this decision, okay? Um, the executive in this case, okay? was a council formed by 500 men, okay? So you can imagine, <laughs> how can be that an executive branch? Full of people, okay? 500 people is a lot, okay? But that was the way they took decisions, okay? They, they recognized, they recognized that this amount of people 
was really difficult to be managed, okay? So they said, but anyway, we will accept 500 men. And the role of these men was basically that they prepared the topics to debate, okay? So today, we will debate about war with these people, water for this town, etc., etc., okay? And only those topics were discussed, okay? Anyway, it was a mess. <laughs> okay, here we have something particular that okay, the Senate had the power. Okay, still the Senate was like a mix between legislative and executive. But remember that we are talking about Rome. We have a tradition in Rome of monarchs. Okay, they were they had traditionally monarchs that, with the past of the time, became in emperors. Clear. Okay, so we have traditionally we have kings or emperors. Okay. In one moment, at the end of the republic and the beginning of the empire, the Senate was by closed. Okay, was not important any longer. Okay, um, judicial. I'm asking you because you talk about three branches, so I guess you know something about it. The book says something about it. They had the jury. The yes, jury something like that. Yes, that's true. But okay, I will say this. Okay. Um, I won't write this because okay, it's here, but I will explain. This system, uh, the judicial system here in the ancient Greece, was based on very fast processes. Okay, one day of trial. Okay, was very fast. Um, basically, they elected citizens. Okay. Those citizens were paid, okay, for being part of the jury, okay, and they listened the like the arguments and the reasons and the explanations, okay. There was not an attorney. There was not an option for to to defend the position, okay. So no accusation, no defense, only the facts. And they very fast took decisions. Okay. Normally, one of the decisions was I forgot the name. Let me see in because that comes. Yes. Ah, yes. Ostracize. Okay. The similar in Spanish. Ostracism. Ostracize. Okay. That basically means that. One of the decisions could be that the person had to abandon the city, right? had to abandon Athens. And sorry, I forgot something very important here, is that when we talk about, and because of Mariam that you told me about this, when we talk about the democracy in the ancient Greece, we are talking specifically the democracy in Athens, okay? Because the rest of the cities had different systems, okay? Monarchies, aristocracies, etc. Okay, here we talk about Athens. Okay, the capital. And why, what I'm saying is that if the person was guilty, according to the trial, okay, and the jury, basically he had to abandon the city. Okay. That was not only that. That was not the only punishment, but could be punished in that way. Okay. Judicial here, guys. Here, in this one. Judicial is based in something absolutely important. And please, write this big, okay, in red. I don't know how, but they created the first legal code, okay? Basically, Rome invented the first legal code. It is the Roman law, okay? The Roman law. And is that important? that nowadays 
lawyers when are in the university still studying Roman law. Okay? If you want to be a lawyer, okay, if you want to be a lawyer, you have to study the Roman law. That important is this invention, this creation. Okay? And it's different because based on this, here we have a very democratic characteristic of the Roman Republic. Citizens, the richest one or the poorest one, were judged based on the law. Okay? Not like this, that if today I'm angry or I don't like this person, maybe I can influence in the decision. No, here we have a code and we follow the rules. Okay? According to the book, can you like him or not? I don't care. Is guilty or not? Okay, so as we know nowadays, and we, as we do nowadays, if the law says this, then you have this consequence. Or not, or you are free, okay? Clear? So this system, based obviously in the laws created by the Senate, okay? Because they were the judicial, the, the, the legislative branch. Uh, this system is the first expression okay, of justice that I will say real justice. Okay? That is why we study it. We study it yet. Okay? Uh, something more? Okay, citizens that have the chance to protect themselves with this with this um, 12 ah, the, there are the 12 tables, no? These are the laws, okay? They, the name of these laws is 12 tables. Basically because they wrote the laws in 12 tables. <laughs> Very simple, okay? No mystery, it's, okay, it's not rocket science. <sighs> Clear? Something more? Something that's missing? Something that you wanna add? Okay, I will stop here, the video.